One of them delivered, three of them didn't. And the thing I learned was we weren't talking the same language as the other projects, and it was on us, right? When you start changing stuff, you need to go to the people who, were in, in whose environment you're changing. You can't just expect them to get on board. And there's a certain, and I'm guilty of this as anyone, there's a certain kind of arrogance or a belief in the process. Like, surely, just look at what we're doing. It's patently self-evidently better than the thing you've been doing, therefore get on board. Okay? There's, it doesn't really work like that. Uh, um, and and a, f a few years ago, a chap called Richard Dernal, um, who's one of the smartest lean operations folks I've ever worked with, uh, blogged a wonderful, wonderful article. It's on richarddernal.com. It's called Agile Adoption Patterns. Um, I take issue with two of the words in that title. Okay, the thing he describes isn't really agile adoption. The early part of it is agile adoption. The rest of it is basically lean organization change. And the things he describes aren't patterns. Okay, uh, um, other than that, it's spot on. But the model is really good. So, uh, so let, let me just walk you through it. And it kind of frames the rest of what I want to talk about. Okay, so the first thing that happens when you start with some kind of agile adoption, the people break. Okay, what does that mean? That means we are, we're changing their working environment, we're changing what they do, we're changing how they're, what, what good looks like, right? We're changing how, how they work. Um, we're often changing, you know, the, the teams they sit in. I'm used to sitting as a business analyst, I'm used to sitting with all my business analyst buddies on the fourth floor. And now you're, what, you're pulling me out to sit with a team of smelly programmers? Do you know who I am? Right, you get this kind of thing going on. So the people break, they're, they're confused, uh, they're, it's, this is change, this is difficult. And as well, we need to be very aware of, they didn't sign up for this. Okay, I'm working at a large American bank at the moment, and we're busy causing all kinds of mayhem um, organizationally. And a lot of the people involved didn't sign up for that. They've literally been working in this bank for 20-something years. They've been working in this one job or in this one organization, they've had many jobs. They've been working in this one organization for, you know, for as long as I've been working. And I've been in lots of different companies. I, I don't usually last very long. Um, so, uh, yeah. And, and we've come in and just completely moved their cheese, right? We've said, okay, well, now we're going to do it. And, and some of them are really game. They're saying, oh, you know, I've been here 20-something years, and I'm a senior, senior, senior manager, and I'm going to throw in my title, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come along and just join a, join a delivery team. He's like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Um, some of them are just, you can see the whites of their eyes. They're terrified, okay? We, we're, we're breaking stuff around them. So, okay, so as people start to get on board with it, they suddenly realize the tools break. They realize that the, the, the uh, control mechanisms they had, the things they used to measure, don't apply anymore. So in, in old world, we measure activity, we measure busyness, we measure, because we can see those things. Uh, we measure maybe tickets closed in some support function. Uh, um, so that, that's what we're trying to... We, me we might measure utilization. Utilization is a good thing to measure because I can look around and I can see if someone's busy. And so the, uh, the perverse incentive there, well, what's going to happen? As soon as someone looks at me, I'm going to just start typing. Okay? I, I can look busy with the best of them. Don't worry. Uh, um, there's a lovely Dilbert a few years ago. They said, okay, we're going to start rewarding people for, for lines of code produced. Dilbert says, I'm going to go code me a new car. <laughs> I don't need to. Okay, so, but we're good at that as well. So we're good at things like uh, introducing tooling. We've gotten really good at that. So then what happens is this, the governance breaks. What do I mean by governance? I'm going to come back to this again and again in this talk, because this, I think, is the crux of everything. Governance is this, are we okay? Are we investing in the right things? How do we know what we're doing? How do we know whether we're on track? Okay. This is the first point at which we start to... Cr Whoa, hang what is there in the manifesto about governance? Like program-level governance, multi-project, multiple work stream governance, interdependency governance. That, well, there kind of isn't anything, so we're going to need to figure some stuff out. Once we get the hang of governance and all of those sorts of things, so now we've, now we've, ma now we've scaled. Okay, we've done the first level of scaling, if you like. We've understood what it means like to manage a portfolio of things 
each thing is locally doing fine. Okay, well then what happens? Well then the next thing that happens is the customer breaks. Now, for a lot of you folks, I suspect, when I first saw this, I thought, hang on a minute, we've solved customer. On-site customer, or product owner, whatever your flavor of agile might be. We've got this, the customer. What do you mean the customer breaks? Well, at scale, the customer is no longer the customer. The customer is a nebulous concept. Okay? The customer is really a placeholder for the product direction. Okay? Or understanding the market. So it's, uh, it's all of the different kinds of market and, and, and product kind of roles. So product management, market uh, engineering, all that kind of stuff is all tied up in the idea of the customer. So one of my pieces of work that I'm, I'm, I'm helping out with at this bank has 50, I'll say it again, 50 director level people, senior level people, all clamoring for work through this very, very narrow pipe okay, of you know, a small number of teams who are able to deliver. And managing the expectations across 50 people is an incredibly hard job. Okay, it's actually several people's job just to manage the expectations of these people before this stuff ever even hits the pipe. Okay? Understanding how stakeholders respond to better information, different information. Uh, when you start talking about cycle times and flow and throughput and lead times and, and SLAs around that kind of stuff versus uh, all of the Gantt charty things they're used to seeing is a complete adjustment. And then, okay, so then what happens? Well, now we've got the hang of getting all these people to, f you know, to, to understand things like opportunity cost and cost of delay and all of that. Great, then what? Well, then the money breaks, or the funding, or the financial controls, however you want to look at it. We're used to being in top-down, cost-accounted organizations. Anywhere in the West is pretty much that's how it works. You have the, the people at the top of the organization have big pots of cash, and then they have now smaller pots of cash, smaller pots of cash down to your project. Okay, so we have this very this hierarchical uh, dribble down of, of money, and we're trying to get work going across the organization, and those things don't work together. <coughs> and once you can start seeing people from very different parts of the organization wanting something that cuts across all those different parts of the organization, how you fund that becomes a non trivial problem. There's, I, I'm looking at work that hasn't started, that hasn't started for months. Not because no one wants it to start, but because they still haven't figured out between them who should pay for what. Okay, it's like it's heartbreaking. But it happens. Finally, finally, if you're really, really lucky, and if you have a whole bunch of things come together, finally the organisation breaks. This is the point at which now we've got our, our sort of throughput accounting and our beyond budgeting and. And now we've got some very senior people in the organization prepared to take a massive risk of, of rebuilding the organization around value streams, around customers, around flow. Um, I think I've seen this once, and I might be exaggerating the number one. Okay. With the amount of snake oil I'm hearing about scaling like it's a solved problem. Do my thing, it's a solved problem. It really is not a solved problem. It's an incredibly hard problem. It's something you can chip away at and something you can have an impact on and something in some organizations you can have a significant and lasting impact on. But boy, is it, it's not a solved problem. 